Good, eh? You see me and you feel good. Uh, don't care about the food, huh? No. <laughs> okay. You want some joke first or serious story first? <laughs> How many serious? <laughs> How many jokes? <laughs> oh, no. Poor sense of humor. All right, serious. <laughs> Tuck your smile back in. <laughs> Nobody allowed to smile except the one who won joke. <laughs> I told you so many stories, I wonder if I have told this story or not. If not, then you listen well. If you, I did, then you just boo in the beginning. <laughs> then we don't waste time, <laughs> okay? Like, I don't waste time to tell you, and you don't waste time to listen. Capish? Yes. This story is about a holy man who deal with his desire, yeah? And who deal with temptation. It goes like this. A holy man, one day, walking through the shop, yeah, in the shopping center, maybe supermarket, yeah, and he saw a grocery in which they sell beautiful, fresh mangoes. Mm. Wow! His mind urged him to buy some, to enjoy it, yeah, of course, like everybody else. So the holy man was trying to tell him that, no, 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 you don't need mangoes, yeah. Ah, you don't have enough money to buy it to start with, and you don't need it. And you are a holy man, you just eat whatever you have, and you don't desire anything else. But would the mind listen? No? The mind doesn't listen. Never mind. The holy man went back to his cave, continued to meditate. But all night long, <laughs> All he meditated upon was the fresh, luxurious uh, my God, you know everything. How come? <laughs> Were you that uh, holy man reincarnate? <laughs> we all know very well the trick of the mind, yeah? Okay. So he was so tired and exhausted, sitting there fighting with his own mind. Yeah, so okay? Fine, fine. So he went into the jungle next morning, still defeated, you know, and exhausted by the fighting with the mind the whole night through. And he went and chopped some wood, yeah? And then with a lot of wood, he carried it all the way from the jungle to the shopping center. Wow, it's a long way, many kilometers long. Originally, he went there just to get some necessity for the whole week, you know? Yeah, to his cave, you know, like some bare necessity, like maybe some flour for chapatis, yeah? And just some salt, some just simple, yeah? yeah. That's the way I eat in a... <laughs> you know, I tell you, I know this very well too. I was in India, huh? I didn't have enough money at that time, huh? I just I had what I saved with me, yeah? It lasts for a while in India, but it's not forever, and I know my limit. So every day I allow myself like maybe two rupees, yeah? You know how much that is? Maybe ten cents. Okay? Two rupees is fine. You, know, you can buy flour, you can buy some salt for chapati, and you buy a cucumber <laughs> and tomatoes, sometimes like that. So what I do is I buy a jar of peanut butter, eh? everything cheap in India, and some flour, and those are very flat plates uh, which I can use to eat and cook tea and bake chapati on it. But, you know, every day I had to walk through a small little homemade and family hut, you know? They make just a little shack like this and they sit on it and they sell samosas, <laughs> fry, hot, crispy samosas, and just bite size, you know, about the size of my wrist. <laughs> Mm, every time I have to walk through that, <laughs> from my mountain hut to down to the market where they sell cucumber and flowers, and also to the Ganges River, where I, you know, have to take a shower, bath for myself and wash my clothes. Not every day I can spare it every two th two days, you know, but I need to go down there sometimes, <laughs> for one reason or another. And every time I go through that shop. I said to myself, no, you can't afford it. You don't eat samosa today. You are not eating samosa. No. <laughs> and then on the way back, I just buy one. <laughs> I just bought one samosa. And after one samosa, oh, 
Okay, I just eat one more samosa today and then uh, that's it, no more. And one more samosa because they are only bite size, you know? So one, one rupee is each. You can't buy bigger than that. Oh, okay, one more only, okay? One more only. And then one more. <laughs> I could eat five of them. <laughs> so I say, for that, you're going to be punished. <laughs> no bazaar for one week. <laughs> you eat whatever up here, no cucumber, no tomatoes, no peanut butter. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? So, wow, you can't always win, huh? It's okay, you pay for what you get. It's fair, you know, I didn't steal anything. <laughs> I play with the cucumbers <laughs> and the tomatoes and then peanut butter. So the whole week I eat just chapatis, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and the salt. Yeah, well, it tastes awful, but serve me right. <laughs> you enjoy all in one day and you have to suffer five more days. It's okay. <laughs> it's my own problem. <laughs> all right, so now that guy, the, the holy man, he, he was not... He was a holy man, for sure, you know, don't laugh at him, you know. I probably was a little holy at that time, too. Not that I was bad or anything, <laughs> just I need the samosas. <laughs> I mean, how long can you eat just chapati, peanut butter, huh? without thinking of anything else? And the, the shopkeeper, why he has to make the shop right there, where I'm walking through every day? I mean, he could have done it somewhere else. He knew I was passing through, no? <laughs> Long time ago, before I was even in India, I just planted a shop right there, <laughs> just to make trouble. He knows I'm coming. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> All right. So I just confess with you my sin, huh? Don't tell anybody else. <laughs> Don't give this to SMTV. <laughs> okay, anyway. So he carried the heavy wood load to the bazaar, which is a very long way, many kilometers. You know how holy men in India, they live up in the mountain somewhere, yeah, in a cave somewhere. And to go down to the mountain, you know, to the bazaar, it takes a long time. Hmm? They mostly live far away from it all, because that's what they want. Yeah. But then it's inconvenient when you want to have something, huh? Okay, nevertheless, he carried a heavy wood load down to the mountain. You sure you didn't hear this story? No. Okay, fine. <sighs> because I read many and I marked it so that someday I have a chance to tell you, but then I didn't know which one I told, which one I did not. Because sometimes I told some already in Taiwan, and some I told already maybe in Germany. I don't remember. So tell me if you remember, okay? Yeah. All right. And then... Uh, He's very tired, you know, and exhausted. But he doesn't give himself a rest. He keeps telling himself, You want the mangoes, you work for it. Now you carry the wood and you don't complain. So I was sweating like hell. <laughs> and it was, you know, the, the mountain road, you know, very difficult. But he make himself do it. Okay, there you are. He came down to the mountain at last. He saw the wood, exchanged it for money, and bought some mangoes. Okay. He went back to his cave eh? in the forest. And he put the date on a stone in front of him. And he said to himself, you know, his mind, Today, he put the, the, the mangoes, yeah? What did I say? <laughs> the date. The date of mango, who cares? Okay. <laughs> okay, he put it on the stone in front of his cave and he said, Okay. You just look at it, okay? Because I know you very well. He talked to himself. He said his mind. He said, today you want me to buy you uh, mangoes. Tomorrow you will want uh, something else, yeah, a melon. And the next day, who knows, you might want to buy uh, a, a house. And then, and then, and then you will me, want me to have a wife to take care of the house. And then, that's it, finish of my story, end of my life. I know what you want. That's what you want, hey? I'm showing you. That's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. Becomes a wife and then, uh, because uh, come the wife and then the children, yeah? Yeah, and then the birthday and then the death day and then the marriage of the children and then the grandchildren and the marriage of the grandchildren and forever. Never done. Never done. Never done. <laughs> I will be then your slave, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> For at the end of all this. So he just telling that. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, just uh, when he was talking to his mind like that, a person passing by, yeah, he escaped. So he's, he called him, hey, buddy, take the mangoes, it's yours. So of course the traveler was, you know, hot and thirsty, a mountain, oh, immediately, really, are you sure, sir? Oh, yes, sir. I'd be happy to take them all. He took them all. Yeah, even eating some of them in front of the holy man. <laughs> wow, poor holy man, must be mouth-watering. Okay. He's better than me. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't that holy at that time. <laughs> Ah, oh, poor guy, he worked so hard, he should have deserved it. You know, at least he go and cut wood, no? <laughs> but he doesn't want to do it again, huh? Suppose uh, next day he want apple, huh? And then he have to go cut wood again, huh? And then just uh, by the habit of following the desire of the mind, uh, who knows where it leads him, yeah? Remember the story of the yogi who had just a cloth to cover his milk? His milk place, yeah? yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm not telling. Good, thank you. <laughs> thank you that you remember, and so I don't have to tell a boring story again, you know. <laughs> I guess some people keep telling the same story again and again. <laughs> so there was a journalist who brought in some humorous story for the editor in chief, you know, of the journal. And uh, the editor in chief was reading it for a while and then just don't say anything. So the journalist asked him, oh, why didn't you laugh? It's a very funny story. He said, I laughed last year, no? <laughs> <laughs> Same story. <laughs> so it's very difficult to control our mind, huh? Yeah. I don't care. I don't control my mind that much. If he wants a mango, I give him a mango. <laughs> because I also work for it already, yeah? Maybe that's why I work so hard, because <laughs> I have to give my mind everything he wants. Well, not everything, yeah? the things that's uh, harmless. You know, since I could afford a mango, I just have a mango, yeah? <laughs> Otherwise, I could be saintly, yeah? I could go in the cave, <laughs> <laughs> sit there and meditate all by myself, yeah? And eating chapatis every day, and now and again, you know, sin with some five <laughs> samosas. <laughs> you know what samosas is? No, this Indian snack is beautiful. It's like a meal itself, you know. They put a lot of um, all kind of uh, mixed vegetable inside, eh? namely peas, yeah, chopped carrot, and uh, uh, potatoes, yes, and spice, spice in it. No, maybe chapatis or, or masala, something like that inside, yeah. And then outside, they already fry that. Uh, maybe they fried already or not. The stuff inside, I think they fry a little bit first, no. Otherwise, it takes too long to cook the potatoes inside. I guess they did fry the potato, uh, whatever, you know, peas, you know, sweet peas and uh, chopped carrot, fried together, spice them already. Okay, and then they put it in uh, a butter, a flat cake like chapatis, I guess, you know, and they fold it into a triangle, triangle kind of shape. Oh, who cares what shape, you know. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and then they fry them, you know, deep fry quick. And that's how you eat it, and it tastes like heaven at that time, no? Oh, oh it is lovely. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I could not resist. It tastes so good. And just exactly that one tastes good. Not every tastes like that. They just make it smaller than usual, you know? It makes it more <laughs> trouble, <laughs> because you eat one, you want another one. <laughs> There's another story about the prophet and the devotees. Okay. One time... Uh, when Prophet Muhammad was talking with a group of disciples, he asked every of them in turn what they possessed. Yeah, possess. What is their possession? What do they have? So, uh, one of the disciples by name Hazrat Umar replied to the Prophet, Oh, Prophet, I have a wife and many children camels, and so on and so forth. It took him a long time to list all of his <laughs> possessions. <laughs> yeah, maybe camels and then coconut tree and palm trees and date trees and, uh, you know, what else, you know, house, hotel, room for rent, whatever, yeah. Take a long time, okay. All of the others made similar replies until the turn of one 
disciple by name Hasrat Ali. He said to his master, Oh, master, oh, sir, he uh, spoke out. He declared his love for the prophet. He said, My only possessions are God and you. Except for these two, I have nothing worth of mentioning. <laughs> so the prophet Muhammad was explaining his teachings through the answers of this disciple. He was well pleased, I guess, yeah? Hmm. Saying that worldly possessions count for very little. We have them for a short time only. They do not go with us to the world beyond. Attachment to them leads only to pain and suffering as we are born again and again to satisfy ourselves because of the desire for these, which had not been fulfilled during our lifetime. Yeah? Because we have more, then we are more attached to them. And they give us comfort and I say pleasure and stuff. And when we die, we wish we have not enjoyed all of them yet. You know? And then maybe at that splitting moment, our soul left the body with the desire that we haven't enjoyed all our possession. And then that's how we come back to life. I mean physical life, again and again, transmigrate and suffer, yeah? So that's why the prophets say that possession only leads to suffering and transmigration. This is the lot of uh, those who love the ways of the world. But those who love God and are always engaged in the contemplation of their beloved transcend this region of births and deaths. Well, the one who wrote this thinking, it's just a matter of understanding this simple truth. <laughs> Is that simple? Yeah? Yes. Simple, but not simple to, <laughs> to carry it out, huh? I told you about the story of my sin, no? My, uh, what's the name of that? That square, that uh, <laughs> triangle stuff? Samosas, yes. <laughs> I was addicted to samosas at that time. Well, but you have to know, I had very little money at that time. And mostly I eat just chapatis and sometimes some cucumber. Yeah, chapati and uh, peanut butter. Yeah, just to keep the body still alive. So, of course, you know, when I pass by the samosa, wow! <laughs> that is something out of that world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so most of the sage, they also prefer to live in the, uh, in the mountain and remote area because of that too, no? perhaps, yeah? What you don't see doesn't hurt you, right? Doesn't tempt you. It's truly like that. You know, like uh, in my place, if I stay away from the kitchen, I don't even think of eating. You know, I just stay in my place and do what I do and don't even feel hungry or nothing. But because of the dogs and the boy, I have to keep going into the house. And when I passed through the kitchen, I saw many things there. Okay, I start eating. It's like that. Sometimes I not even feel hungry. But if I don't eat then, then later on I would think of them as well. So I might as well just eat it while I'm not even hungry so that I don't eat too much even. You know? Yes. In uh, Chinese feng shui, they also advise you not to build a kitchen in the middle of the house. <laughs> huh, how do they know? <laughs> how could they guess? Yeah, yeah, because because they said that uh, in the feng shui, you know, feng shui, yeah, the art of uh, building good house and uh, auspicious house. They say if you build a kitchen in the middle of the house, then everyone in the house will be too attached to food. We all the the, the activities was surrounding only by, you know, uh, surrounded of uh, surrounded the cooking and food and stuff like that. So they even advise you to build a kitchen outside. <laughs> so when you want to go to eat an extra, you have to think twice. <laughs> Do I <laughs> want to venture into the cold, <laughs> yeah, into the wow outside of the garden <laughs> and cook something or not? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of moving my kitchen outside <laughs> into some remote area of the garden, you know, where it's freezing <laughs> day and night in winter, and then we think how much weight we can lose. 
My dogs also get fat. <laughs> one of it, no, uh, yeah, one or two of them. They're really putting weight on. You know, happy. You know, when she lay down, her her fat just flow alongside, <laughs> flop on one area. You know. <laughs> And when she wake her body, we can hear, you can see flop, 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 you know, <laughs> running back and forth. <laughs> when she first comes, she doesn't have chin, and now she has three chins. <laughs> okay, any question from your land or from your center? Your brother and sister did not delegate you to come here and ask anything? They didn't know you're going, huh? Yeah, okay. Uh, from the Arkansas Center, they did ask me to bring a card for you. Oh. May I pass it to you? What is that? The Christmas card. Ah, oh, Christmas card, okay. It's not a question. Okay. Thank you very much, all the Arkansas people. All right, love. Thank you. Anyone else? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, Master, I have a question about uh, animals. Some of the animals are more noble than we are. Some of them have higher consciousness. Uh, yes. And yet you also say that Human, being human mm. is, is the peak of creation as well? Yes. So how is it that, can the animals, uh, do, will they become human? Or do they, can the animals attain uh, enlightenment and, and go beyond the physical? Ah, it depends on animals, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say like the tiger will go straight to heaven. <laughs> yeah, but most of the animals... Actually, uh, some tigers and lions are very noble as well. You'll be surprised. It depends, you know. Any race of animals, even in the ferocious animal, there are some saintly beings born into it, yeah? Many times, like sometimes you see on television, there was a girl in Africa. Uh, they were molested by a couple, seven men even. And then the, the lion came and shoo them all away and guard the girl until his fa her family came and then left, yeah? And some um, lion even, uh, I would say, rescue some other babies and all that stuff, yeah? And many, many stories about that, yes. Okay, uh, some animals that came straight from heaven, do you understand me? To come down to help human, yeah? In that case, they will go back straight to where they came from, only, only elevated, <laughs> one, stuff, one step higher than when they were before, you understand me? higher heaven or higher level of consciousness as a reward from heaven, yeah? Okay. Human is higher in the way that we have many choices. See, we can choose to be noble, yeah? We can rescue any other human when we want to. We can help our neighbors. We can share our possession and our labors, our love, anything we want. We can be heroes, yeah? We can choose to be vegetarian or non-vegetarian, we can choose to be a saint, you understand me? We can choose to meditate on God and elevate ourselves anytime. We have that privilege, yeah? Animals, they have very few choice because of the nature of their, of their species, yeah? For example, okay, the dogs, yeah? Uh, Sometimes they, they come here, they could rescue other people or do something else, but they are with you and they're limited to what you want them to do. Do you understand me? They don't have much choice. See what I mean? Okay. Uh, to be reincarnated into animal kingdom is easier. Yeah? To be reincarnated in the human world is hard. Okay? You need, uh, how you say, I told you before, human quality. Yeah? You have to have enough human quality. You have to have affinity with the parents. Yeah? and with the society, with the, 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 the people around which you were born. And very difficult. So the Buddha say that uh, there's a blind turtle, you know. <laughs> Only once every hundred thousand years he came up to the surface of the sea. And at that time they flow a piece of wood, you know, toward that place, and there's a hole in it. And the blind turtle happened to just put his head through that hole. <laughs> and that's how rare it is to have a human body. You understand me? Nowadays, even rare, they have contraceptive medicine, yeah, and all kind of things. And humans have a lot and a lot of choices. You see what I mean? And it's a pity if we don't choose well. Animals, they are limited to their... For example, if a bird, yeah, want to come down and help humans, it's difficult for them. 
As soon as they come down to the human world, they can be eaten, yeah? <laughs> or they've been captured and then put in cage or sold on their, or die meanwhile, something like that, during the process. You understand me? Yeah. So humans are very privileged, yes, because of what you have done in the past, perhaps you've done something good, yeah, that you are married, that you can choose a human body, okay? To be uh, a human, you need some merit. You have done something good in the past in order to be able, yeah, <laughs> to be able to pick a human birth. Yeah. Some human, although maybe they're saintly, nobly, but maybe they haven't done those human merit. You understand me? So they don't have enough choice. They have to be born as animals. Whatever they want to, to do, they have to do it with that body. You see what I mean? Which is more difficult. Hmm? Human, we have brain, we have hand, we can do all kind of tools, we can, you know, invent a lot of things and make our life comfortable and help everybody else or animals. But most, most of the time we don't choose it. Yes. The human, uh, before they came down to this world, they all promised promise that, okay, I will walk the way of God, I will walk the way of love, I will correct my mistake in the past life, I won't do it again, I definitely will not, I will do the opposite, I will do good, I will be generous, I will be kind, I will be compassionate, I will do this, I will be a hero of humans and animals, I will lay down my life for the needy, for the, the weak and the small, yeah, for the animals even. But when they come down here, forgot. And the force of the previous karma come pounding upon them also, together with the fixed karma of this lifetime. The fixed karma of this lifetime is the one that they are born with. They have to pick up some karma to be born with, yeah? And they, that's the price they have to pay to be a human. They have to struggle to be good. It's not easy for them that they're born and then everything there, you know, they have enough wealth, they have enough strength, and they have, uh, you know, just, uh, 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 how you say, um, unchangeable compassion, you know, and then they will always do good. You, you understand what I mean? And they will always part with their money easily. It's not like that. They have to pay the price. That is struggling with the obstacles that they are born with, with the karma eh? that, that, that they are born with with what they did in their last life, they come back onto them. And they have to struggle against that, to do the opposite. Many fail miserably. And then have to come back again, promise again, but this time we double. You see what I mean? The karma of the past life and the life now <laughs> will come back on them on the next future life. Be harder and harder all the time. So you see how poor the human is. Yeah? And if they don't have any guide to show them, to remind them, to support them mentally and physically and spiritually, and the, the congregation of saintly people will have the same goal, same mind, then they fail miserably. Many people fail. Yeah? You see? See, that's why many people came to my lecture, even got initiation, but dropped out. Hmm? They can't. If they don't come back to group meditation, don't keep their faith and hang on to us together, you know, support each other, then they, 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 they're weak. They will also fall, yeah? Give in to the force of karma, of the mind. Very difficult. Is that uh, the answer, right? Thank you, oh, Master. sorry. Is that clear enough, love? Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so we should really look at animals as our benefactors who've come here to help us. They do help, yeah, a lot. Yeah, even though we've got the tough job, yes, but, but uh, we should look we should look at them quite different to what we do now. How different? Oh, like we look down on them now. You what? Look? We look down on animals now. Oh, you do? Okay, so you want to look up to them now? Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Okay, many animals they help invisibly, you see, but their help is limited. You see, for example, uh, I have a neighbor who has a horse. Okay. He is quietly ward off negative influence, ward off negative people. But uh, nobody knows that, okay? And he's limited to where he is. You understand me? 
the neighbor has him, but he has a, a cage, you know, the style for him, and then a fence, yeah, you know, he we only uh, run up and down in that square meters, you know. <laughs> And he eat the grass in there, and sometimes don't have anything. And they eat, uh, you know, maybe in the morning they feed them, and then let them out all day, nothing to eat, until five, six o'clock at night. And then inside, probably eat then, and then go to sleep. Because he's always in the same place, so I don't see any grass growing more for him. You see what I mean? Yeah, something like that. And even though he wanted to help humankind, but he's limited to helping maybe only me as his neighbor and his own family who is a caretaker and who doesn't even appreciate him that much. Do you understand me? Only I know it, but I won't tell the neighbor. And if I tell the neighbor, they would think I'm cuckoo. <laughs> what? The horse? Guardian of the good? <laughs> you see? <laughs> Are you say, uh, dispeller of the evil? <laughs> Woohoo, cuckoo! <laughs> yes? Does the horse have any awareness? Oh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. He just do it like the sun shine on you, okay? Thank you. <laughs> the sun will not <laughs> proclaim anything, will not think anything, like you breathing, yeah? You don't aware, but you do it, yeah. Uh, that's just an example for you, huh? And for example, the swan, yeah? He's, he's helping me to tell me some other stuff, yeah? Something about who's bad and all that for me, or who, who I should not have, but... I have them in any way, you know, bad or not bad, because, well, <laughs> that's the way I do. But I do appreciate, she told me, yeah? For example, like that, all oh, my birds, yeah? And she, she told me a lot of stuff, you know, sometimes I take the advice, sometimes I don't. <laughs> sometimes I say, oh, keep it for yourself, I don't want to even know about it. If that person is bad, what good for me to know now? Should I kick him out? <laughs> and then he go out do bad to somebody else? <laughs> What's the use of that? You know, so whatever, you know. Knowing a lot is not always uh, good. Yeah, good, maybe good for other people. For me, no use. If I kick this guy out, the other one come. It's worse. <laughs> I need some people around to do something anyway, you know. Sometimes take care of the dogs for me when I'm not home, you see this? Yeah? And the dogs and the birds, they need constant people. They don't like to keep changing all the time. It's not good for them, you know, psychologically. Yeah, sometimes changing caretakers, they also feel sad, you know, because they miss that one and that one. They're very sentimental. Even just the caretaker, you know, the one who helped me to take care, they also befriend them and love them. So I don't want to change too much in the house, you see what I mean? Bad or good, I just keep it and bear with it. Sometimes I could not bear, I tell you the truth. <sighs> sometimes the energy is so heavy, I don't know where to run. And sometimes I run away even to all the corner of the garden or all the corner of the land, which is about one kilometer away. And still, that day, they bug me a lot. Normally, they don't, they don't call too much, but that day, they know exactly that I want to escape. They keep calling, calling, phoning for every little pickle reason, yeah? Like they, they grow a little pick, <laughs> pimple here, they call me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the dogs scratch their ear, why, Master? <laughs> Something like that. And, you know, it's just uh, no end. Huh? I give up. I just bear it, you know. Just let them beat up, and then when they're tired, they stop, you know. What else to do? Yeah? Anyone else? Yes. Master, on Sunday you explained that if we will care, take care about our husband, they will not uh, leave us. That is correct. <laughs> I agree. But uh, the animal will not leave us. No, no animal. Husbands. Husbands. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of animal. <laughs> and, Thank you. Uh, I read it. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, my husband, uh, he uh, uh, thinks that, that he is very, uh, very pity man because he have a wife which. Uh, is crazy because uh, I started uh, meditating, be vegetarian, mm. and he is a pure, uh, poor uh, man because I cook. Uh, I cooked uh, me uh, meat for him for seven years, mm. but I re I realized that uh, it is not worthy, you know, because he is not happy 
Anyway, uh, because anyway, even if you cook meat, yes. Why? Because you Be- don't he eat was him. criticized, saying that I don't uh, taste it, that oh, okay, it is okay. not, you know, okay, salty or, or it is dry and so on. So oh. I decided I will not cook any more Animal. meats. So <laughs> I cook only vegetarian. Yeah, and take he, it or leave it. Huh? And then what happened? No, he he thinks that he is really in very bad position. That I am crazy, <laughs> <laughs> and. He is this pu- uh, that uh, so million people uh, crazy man. Uh, yes, hmm. behave like this, and I am, I am, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, you are crazy, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Typical blonde, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? You have a husband, you have family, you have beautiful home. You come here and sit on the floor for days, <laughs> on end. <laughs> If he, if he would know it, he, he would really <laughs> send me to some <laughs> asylum, <laughs> mental asylum. Mental. Yeah, I told you, that's why. That's why from the beginning of the creation, yeah, all the practitioners have been chased, persecuted, and misunderstood, and killed, murdered, massacred even. You know that? Even nowadays we're all free, but it's not all that free, you know? I am hiding myself everywhere I can. I'm not uh, telling everybody, that, hey, uh, there's a Supreme Master Jing, I live next door to you, do you know that? <laughs> oh, I'm very quiet about my identity wherever I go. Very, very quiet. Yeah? I'm very worried people know. <laughs> yeah, so I don't even go out that much at all. When only now and again, very rare, you know, very rare, like once, try three times a year for some special thing that uh, my assistant cannot find and doesn't understand. I have to go and buy it. <sighs> or some day when all the dogs, uh, you know, have some trouble and nobody there, I have to go to the doctors for with him, something like that, okay? Even I don't have freedom nowadays. And in some country, our disciples also being harassed, some restricted country, uh, some country people don't respect religious I don't just mean religion, but, you know, anything, <laughs> not government, you understand? Anything that is not government and anything that talk about God, <laughs> uh, that is, uh, they restrict that. Or anything that talk about another God that's not their God, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> or anything that talk about the God that don't spell the same name, that their God spelled. <sighs> Many things like that. We don't have freedom, yeah? So you should be happy that you have only one husband. <laughs> and if he doesn't feel happy, that's his problem. You are happy anyway. I feel it, I feel it that it is his problem. Yeah. You are happy anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God it's not the opposite, you know. Uh, well, what does he want then? He wants you to eat with him, right? Eat meat with yes, him. Yes, yes, and no. uh, drink wine because he is making it, uh, and I even, I uh, before mm-hmm. I liked wine, of but course. I stopped it. Yes, and he starts to making it uh, no. you know, oh, himself, okay. and he ha- uh, he has some good taste, and mm. everybody likes it, mm. and I even don't taste it, and oh. he is very you know pure man that I I oh. I'm poor not, man. Mm. <laughs> Oh I told God. him that I would, I, I would like. Is he his... Catholic? No, no. Not even is... nothing. No, no, nothing. Okay then. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> that you married to such a guy. <laughs> yeah. I want him to be happy, so I told mm-hmm. him if he's not happy with me, maybe he can be happy somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So what did he say? No. No, uh, he didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is uh, why I ask because you told us take care good about mm-hmm. our uh, spouse, relationship yes, yes, yes. that uh, everything uh, could be okay and yeah. nice and happy oh, but you are taking good care yes i i try i think i i do it <laughs> yeah you didn't leave him he should feel happy already no <laughs> you still with him yeah and bear his uh, <laughs> and foul meeting <laughs> smell and wine and all that you're very good already tell him yeah Tell him you love him, or else you would have left him already. Tell him because of your master told you to be good to your husband, or else you say you're not. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, tell him that, okay? Tell him because my, uh, my master is good. She told me don't divorce you, 
take care of you, be good to you. I am be good as I can, but I don't want to eat animals. I love animals. I don't want them suffer for me. Show him all the, the, the picture, the film that animals suffer, how they kill them, how they kick them around and hang them upside down with one leg and all that. Collect them all from internet, show it to him. And tell him, this is why I don't eat them. He okay? don't want to see it. Okay, then <laughs> yeah. this is from. Just leave it there, he'll see it one day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just leave it hang around. And one day he'll see it by himself, okay? Uh, yeah. So just tell him there's no other thing you can do for him because you're already doing your best, yeah? As if you don't want to drink wine, you don't want to drink alcohol. It's bad for health, everybody knows that. Why do you want to poison me if you love me? <laughs> Ask him, okay? <laughs> alcohol is poison. Uh, every doctor tells you that. All the science tells you that. Huh? Why do you want to poison me, okay? <laughs> Meat eating is also a cause of cancer, yeah? a cause of uh, all kind of sickness as well, yeah? And so why also, why should uh, I poison myself? Why you want me to poison myself? And why do you want to poison me? If you want to poison yourself, well, that's your choice. <laughs> but if you love me, well, leave me with my healthy choice, okay? Not talk about spiritual, nothing, nada, yeah? And if you don't want to see how the animals suffer, okay, it's up to you. But I saw it, I don't want to cause them suffering directly, and that's my choice, and you should respect that. There's nothing wrong with all this. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything bad to anybody. I just being loving and compassionate and take care of my health so that I live longer and healthier for you. Huh? <laughs> Suppose I drink wine and I have cancer, I have brain trouble, and I eat meat, I got sick and all that, and I'm ill, then you have to take care of me more. Yeah? I'm laying in the hospital with all kinds of sickness, huh? Oh, I, I, I'm more ill and not healthy, then, then what kind of love you have for me and how useful can it be with a sick wife or even with an earlier dead wife? Huh? I want to keep myself healthy, live long for you, no? I should thank my master, no? Mm. <laughs> thank you, master. You are welcome. <laughs> Next one. Anyone? Yes. Here. Master, um... There is a, a one woman in Portugal who write uh, three four books. Uh, uh, she she say that uh, she speak uh, with one uh, one one spirit uh, called uh, Jesus Christ. Yes. My question uh, uh, is uh, about uh, um, who, what kind of spirits um, call himself like uh, Metatron, Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus Ananda, um, Lucifer. Oh. Uh, and uh, because... Uh, um, you mean they talk through the medium? The spirit come to a person, any person, and then talk through it. Yes. Okay. Fine. One, one of one of them one of it is, Jesus. Uh, uh, is Jesus Christ, okay. and and uh, make one woman, one um, very popular, um, write books. Uh, who sells a lot in Portugal? Yes. About uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus Christ, and um, I, I read some of the, of these, and uh, is it good? the message uh, is not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, uh, good. They spoke that uh, we are in uh, a big transition uh -huh. to a bright f future, uh, uh -huh. the humanity. Anybody can write that. You can read a newspaper and everywhere else and, and write it down. Only Jesus tell you, no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But so what, what is the message then? What should we do? If you don't give me a concrete answer, mm -hmm. my answer to you will not be fair. You understand me? Mm -hmm. People will not understand why I answer like this, like that. If you give me the content, but you, some uh, content of the book, yeah, then my answer will be more support, supported. Do you understand me? Yes. But if I, I'm not Jesus Christ, uh, I, I tell a lie. If I, I, I say, I'm Jesus Christ, it's the first question, first thing. The so, spirits tell a lie, big lie. Maybe he tell a lie. So why, why, why wouldn't he tell a lie? <laughs> What's the problem with not telling a lie with those people? A lot of people tell a lie outside. What is your question? For example, one is sent, uh, uh, call, call themselves um, Ascended Master, like San Ascended Saint Master. Man. Yeah, yeah, Saint 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 Man. Ah, oh, Saint Germain the Price, one of, okay. One of them. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, 
I don't know who is uh, who, who is he. Who is, uh, Saint James in the press oh, is one of the French saints. But that's what they call themselves. And sometimes the astro people, they play joke, you know. Mm-hmm. The astro also know all the teaching. They can have access to us like you. You know all the teaching of Jesus Christ. You have to be good to do good. And you can read some Bible, Buddhist story, and say you have to be good, you do good, otherwise you go to hell and all that stuff. Everybody can tell that. There's no need Jesus to come down in somebody and tell that even. Anybody can tell that. And maybe that person has the good intention to pretend that Jesus say like that so that people will listen more and say, buy the book. And if the book is telling something good, then maybe that person is having good intention to try to spread, tell people to do good things, you know, in some way. But start with a lie, with a big lie. He didn't think it's a lie. He think it's a good lie. <laughs> or maybe it wasn't even a lie, maybe some... Uh, astral spirit, you know, but telling him like that. Then it's the astral spirit who is a liar, okay? Master, I have a question about the unfoldment of consciousness on the earth and planets like it. Like right now we're kind of in the coming out of the dark phase, you know? Mm. Yes. So as that process unfolds, mm. what does life begin to look like on a, on a planet like this? In other words, Say you were to fast forward like 10,000 years and the Master's teaching was accepted by, by everyone and mm. that, say, 20% of the people were initiated or some high percentage. Yes. Then what, what, will what does life start to look like at that point? On this planet, right? Yeah, and if and, and then you, if you were to fast forward beyond that and yes. say, are there such worlds, like physical worlds, where people are all at a very high level, say, all the people are at a fifth level, and do they still have physical bodies at that point, or are they? They what? Do, do they, they still have, have physical bodies at that point, or does some oh, they kind do. of a shift happen? They do. But there is no planet who has only such, you know, not uh, not all the physical planet have all fifth level like that. Right. That is on the the true planet, you know, spiritual planet, which is called Sakan, eh? I mean the true home. That's the home of the master. Yeah, and uh, those people up there are all fifth level. Yeah. But fifth, low fifth, middle fifth, yeah, and high fifth, and super fifth. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes. And in that kind of planet, uh, you don't have body anymore. Of course, you don't have desire or anything, yeah? And what you mean is, suppose a physical planet like this, and all people have become initiated, yeah? Mm-hmm. Or many, right. yeah? Or almost. Then uh, it become a better place, okay? There will be uh, less war or no more war at all. No more killing of animals. Everyone will love and share with each other. Uh, love, affection, and possessions, yeah? And then we will have a happier life, no? Less uh, unfortunate people, uh, no, or less, hom- less or no homeless people, less or no hungry kids, yeah? Less or no disease at all, okay? And uh, animals will be protected, no more uh, flesh uh, eaters, only vegetarians yeah. or vegans, for example, like that. It will be like that. And you will walk in more peaceful atmosphere. You greet each other with a smile every day and no competitiveness in the work. Yeah, everyone leave everyone alone. Just love and friendship. And the higher the consciousness of a planet, the more intensive of that kind of, of energy, you see? Loving and kindness, yeah? Okay? And I have a, another question, which I don't know if it has anything to do with that or not, but I, we all kind of know your position in the universal hierarchy and all that. So I'm just wondering about what's so, what's so significant about this earth that you would come to assist in that process? Every earth is significant. <laughs> yeah? But you, you are significant. You human are significant. I gotta help you guys. Who's helping you? You're drowning. Everybody's drowning. You call that insignificance? <laughs> No, no, I just thought, See? no, I didn't yeah. mean like that, but I just, I don't know how often that happens where, where you would do that. Oh, very often. If I'm not here, send someone else, okay? Until the planet either evolved to the higher consciousness to matching up with other in the galaxies or dissolved and we make new one, okay? And the one who cannot make it will stay somewhere else in another similar planet. You understand me? Yeah, mm-hmm. we concentrate, and all the good one, the saintly one, we take them up, okay, to another saintly planet, yeah, 
and the rest who couldn't make it, we squeeze them in another planet which is similar to their level. Understand me? Yeah. Yes. It's like that. Hmm? But this planet is beautiful. We try to keep it for the younger souls and for the left behind. Yeah. Give them chance to take time. I'm still giving them chance. That's why we have SMTV. Yeah. To clean the atmosphere and to uh, put the higher consciousness and positive energy into the atmosphere of the planet. And that's how we elevate it invisibly, yeah? And then maybe there's a help, a uh, hope, okay? It's already getting better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, you see, all the leaders are better, you know, they're helping so many poor countries, billions of dollars, trillions of dollars pouring out from richest country to poor country now. And they're talking about stop climate changes, talking about disarming, they're talking about peace. They're doing peace, they're disarming. Even America destroyed <laughs> 75 nuclear warheads. Yeah? And Colombia melts all the uh, weapon and make it into uh, agriculture uh, instrument uh, or somewhere else into guitar or something like that. You see what I mean? <laughs> yes. It's happening. It's happening. And oh, many other things here. Chinese allow freedom of religions. <laughs> Hear that? Communist country. <laughs> yeah. And I could even go to Russia to give a lecture, remember? <laughs> I go to I went to Poland, Russia, yeah. Those are former communist bloc now become European. No borders. Yeah, you can travel four thousand miles with no passport. When that whenever that will happen, huh? And many hundred years ago they didn't do it. You know, they're doing all this now. You see? It's very fast. Very fast. Yeah? And many countries advise children to eat more healthy. <laughs> they don't say vegetarian compassion yet, but uh, more healthy. Yes, uh, more vegetable, more fruit, and all that stuff. Huh? Okay, it's too slow for our liking. I know what you feel. I feel even worse. I feel more frustrated. But uh, you have to take it, you know? Take whatever you have, yeah? And it's very good already. Okay? What else, honey? Are you happy? Oh, with yeah. what I said to you. Yeah, very good. Okay. Anything else? Well, kind of a minor question. I, I have some friends who were initiated by a different master, same, the Sant Ma. Um, uh, Kwan Yin Method, yes, okay. Yeah, and they, um, I took one person to the master's lecture, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it was basically the same, yes, yes. same stuff. Yes, yes, theory, yes. And it okay. felt really good, too, and yes. to be in the presence. So, um, so I watched their initiation process, and it was the same. Yes. So I'm just wondering about... Um, the different groups, if it's okay to, to meditate with those people together? Sure, sure, you That's can. Okay. Yeah, why not? I was just wondering about that, because I've never had any... Had any why experience. not? Okay, good. Yeah, if they do the same thing, it doesn't matter. Because they're local to where I am. I'm the only one in my area. So okay, I'm understand. Okay. Why don't you make some more instead? <laughs> <laughs> and you can go with them meanwhile, okay? But make some more so that you... Oh, instead yeah. of following people. <laughs> Yeah, you make people follow you. <laughs> I teach you to be a master, not to be a follower, not even to me. Okay, but that's good, that's good. You can meditate with them, it doesn't matter. Yes, yes. You could also meditate with anyone. You could meditate on the bus or on the airplane in the park. Why not with the, any meditation practitioners, okay? As long as they're doing good, even if they don't practice the light and sound, it's okay to meditate with other people. Just don't do the Kuan when people don't know about it. Okay, they might think you're crazy, that's all. <laughs> something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, you understand? And they will shock you out of your samadhi and that might have some bad effect on your body, yeah? And on your, your uh, psychological uh, security, you know? Safe feeling, yeah? And, and then later, every time you meditate somewhere, you worry, you know? <laughs> Somebody might come and shake you up again. Capish? Yeah. All right. Yeah, who else? Was somebody there? Yeah, the Choco. Well, what I, my question is, is um, I've heard you many times talking about purchasing property. I, I'm a real estate uh, investor in, Where? in North Carolina. Oh. <laughs> and so and when, when I hear this, then, of course, I seem to get a, a, a different feeling from, uh, from a different perspective from what most would. Yeah. And I was just wondering, do you have a group of uh, real estate advisors, uh, 
uh, some close contacts with some people that can really uh, clue in on the different things that you need. I do, I do have. No, I just search on internet. <laughs> there are many everywhere, honey, and everywhere. It just it's not just the uh, professional advice. It's just the sometimes the, the karma, you know. Yeah. Don't worry, we we take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. If I am in North Carolina, I will seek you for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes I cannot even talk to too many people. I have to do it quietly also, because the negative power, if they know too much, they also make trouble for me. Yeah? Only a few people know, yeah? Oh, nowadays it's easy. You look on the Internet, you know? The property listed everywhere. I don't have to be in North Carolina just to be of some help, because uh, there's many different ways you can do it in many different... anywhere. It's just uh, the, the matter or the method of going about finding property. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yes, I know that. Oh, don't worry, it's okay. Yeah, I can take care of that. Thanks a lot anyway. Uh, because searching for property is such a long time, you know? And I have to do it myself. Even if you go and look for it already, I have to go anyway and have a look at it. You see what I mean? So it, it boiled down to that I do it anyway, you know. I, because sometimes I ask somebody else to go and look for it first, and he say, oh, this and that, and oh, very good, very good, and I come, oh, pop. <laughs> you know? Oh, and some, uh, some other places, he told me, oh, this, blah, 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 no, 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 thumb down, thumb down. Oh, then I said, oh, but uh, it sounds okay. I, I just go and have a look, and it's okay. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's boiled out to that. If you want to do everything <laughs> for the best, do it yourself. Huh? <laughs> but thanks a lot anyway. Don't worry, I was a real estate in a former life. <laughs> <laughs> One of former life. I also know some what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyone else? Thank you for the best Christmas ever. Thank you. And also, I was wondering, um, why did God create souls? Why didn't He just leave the non created souls? Why? It seems like so much suffering and work. Why, why did he create souls to begin with? It just happened. It just happened? Yeah. What do you think? God sit there lonely, <laughs> alone, to do what? You know, it just happened. Yeah. Souls do not suffer. Yeah? Your body, your mind suffer. Okay? Every I mean, time. suffering for you, not, I mean, for so oh. much work. Oh, it's never mind about that. Uh, did you ask any mother whether they don't? <laughs> they feel suffering and rising children. They do, but they still want to do. And some people have one child, say no more, and later they have the second and the third, and they love all that. No, not suffering for the, master, the mother too, but she doesn't think like that. She suffers. She knows she suffers, but she likes it. It's okay. You know what I mean? Mm. Some people don't like to be just with the husband all day long. They like to have children. Maybe God also likes that, yeah? It just happened, you know? God has extreme power, and the power come out just created by itself. Do you understand me? I talked about that in Hungary already, the creative power, yeah? God created only one son, and then just that creative power just flow, <laughs> and then it comes out, okay? Yeah, Who else? yeah, there. Mm. Yeah. Desde que nos iniciamos, mi esposo y yo sentimos deseos de difundir el vegetarianismo. Since the moment we, uh, my husband and I got initiated, we wanted to spread uh, the vegetarianism. Mm -hmm. En nuestro país, que es México, hay muchos vegetales y mucha fruta, pero mm. no hay mucha comida vegetal, oh. mucha y, carne vegetal. Yeah. In our country, Mexico, uh, there are um, a lot of vegetables, but not a lot of uh, vegetarian food. Yeah. Mi esposo inventó unas hamburguesas y las llevamos a escuelas para difundir el vegetarianismo. My, my husband created uh, some hamburgers mm. and they uh, distributed in schools. Yeah. I mean selling it or give it for free? No, selling. Selling. Uh, okay. sell. Very cheap. Yes, cheap. Understand. Very cheap. Yes. Este, pero en las escuelas, las, la, los que vendían hamburguesas de carne animal nos hicieron mucha política y 
nos limitaron las las hamburguesas. Les decían a los niños que, que no compraran esas, que compraran de las de carne animal, mm. aunque los niños preferían esas. No, but in the schools where they give uh, children meat, yeah. the hamburgers, they make a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And they try to convince children that they are, the vegetarian are not good, yes, that yes. to buy meat, yeah. Yeah. hamburgers. Y así hemos tenido muchos obstáculos. Intentamos esa vez, también contratamos gente para que nos ayudara a fabricar carne vegetal y la carne vegetal se echaba a perder. Solamente cuando la fabricábamos, mi esposo y yo, con los nombres y la música de la maestra, se, se mantenía. So they encountered a lot of hindrances and, uh, yeah. uh, and the food uh, begins to spoil. Oh, Yes, and they also hire people to, to make hamburgers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, she should only make as much as she can sell and don't have to sell only in school. She sell uh, any other places, a little bit in the school, a little bit somewhere, a little bit somewhere. Sí, sí lo hicimos, maestra. No te entiendas también. They did that. Mm -hmm. So, so what is the question? Entonces, ¿cuál ah, es el, la pregunta? Esa, este, tuvimos que cambiar de ciudad por el trabajo de mi esposo. We have to move to another city because of the job of my husband. Y lo volvimos a intentar. And they tried it again. Mm -hmm. Pero ahora con otro tipo de, con un local de comida vegetariana. But the, in this case, with a store of vegetarian food. In a store of vegetarian food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Snack. Sell in a store, yeah. Snack. Pero yeah. no tuvimos éxito. But they, they uh, didn't have success. Yeah. Ahora deseamos volver a intentarlo, pero me gustaría saber, maestra, ¿qué estamos haciendo mal? They, they wanted to try again, mm -hmm. and, uh, but especially uh, she wants to know what is wrong, what they are doing wrong. No, nothing wrong. The <laughs> society malo. is wrong. De la sociedad está mal, está equivocada. People has been misled too much. So if you want to, uh, how you say, uh, persevere with it, then you go ahead, but make a less quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit at a time until the customer grow more. Yeah? Uh, si quieres continuar, puedes continuar, puedes perseverar, pero en pequeña cantidad, mm. hasta que los clientes empiecen a aumentar. Just make a small quantity, like homemade, you know? Family style and give a little bit here, a little bit there, like that. Una cantidad como para tu familia, nada más. And slowly, yeah. Lentamente. And uh, give the alternative living flyer with it. Y uh, distribuir los volantes de vida alternativa. Or distribute the alternative living flyer first <laughs> and let people get used to it. And oh, start slowly. It's a, it's a painful process, I'm telling you, yes. O antes distribuir los volantes de, de vida alternativa, si es un proceso doloroso. Sometimes I also feel like I'm talking to the wall. A veces la maestra siente que está hablando a la pared. You know, if I'm watching like a Supreme Master television and we are everything in the same zing, and I feel okay, good, very good. And suddenly, sometimes I have to turn to other TV to watch, you know, for some news, yeah. And then I saw, oh, they are taking the lamp out and kill it, and uh, they slaughter the cow for such and such celebration and such and such sacrifice. Oh, my heart just sank. I feel like, and the way they're doing it, it's like they're blowing their nose, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they have no feeling or no connect with the animal, no pity, nothing. Do you understand? They just took them by the leg and throw them in the truck or something, and then going to kill them and laughing all the way, you know? And I just feel like I'm hitting the wall in this world, you know. But I still have to try, you know. You do what you can. And if you feel too tired, then you stop it and maybe do it another time, a very small quantity. <laughs> and maybe make four hamburgers <laughs> and be at four different locations. <laughs> oh, only one first, okay? <laughs> and if that person eat, telephone you, make another, okay, okay, come right away. <laughs> Fresh, you know. <laughs> Uh, coming, <laughs> and then you send it, <laughs> or you just uh, mm, put the advertisement on those a vegetarian shop or any school say if you want vegetarian for health, yeah, healthy food, yeah, compassion food, healthy food, contact me number so and so, order you know for big uh, party or for yourself. Uh, if you order more than five person, discount one percent. <laughs> 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 Something like that. Just make it fun, draw some picture and put it there. And if they order, then you make. 
If they don't order, then forget it then, in case if it's too difficult like that. But God would appreciate your effort, yeah? And even you lose your business, you gain heaven, okay? So it's up to you to continue or not. I don't uh, want you to suffer too much psychological, yeah? Yeah, to lose something is, is, is very sad, yeah? I lose business, you know? And not successful in something you do is very sad thing. I don't want you to be sad, but if you choose to do, continue, and you persevere, maybe one day it will work, yeah? There was a, a couple in, in Finland, yeah? I told you already. In the first year, they make a lot of stuff, huh? and they go sell everywhere. People just uh, hear vegetarian, and they run away. <laughs> they don't even want to look at it. But now they sell it a lot, yeah, and they live on it. They say only maybe a couple of months, you know, a couple of days every month or winter or summer, something like that, and then they live all year round from it. Yeah. Uh, maybe some Vietnamese also in Oregon and other country, other city in America also. They also uh, go sell in a big, big uh, gathering, some big uh, say exposition or something, some days, a week or some, some special months when they have a lot of exposition or gathering, you know, thousands of people, you know, and then they just put their card there and sell it for that season only, mm. and then they live the whole year round. Every time mm. uh, we distribute the flyers, mm. the flyers mm. and assist these events. Mm. Yeah, okay. And then you can sell it in those events too. Yeah, you can have a small card if it's allowed in your country. If not, you apply for permission and you wheel your car to those areas. Or you have a truck, you know, open truck, then you sell it behind your truck, you make ready food and just warm it up in a small stove or something simple, you know, like hot dog style, yeah? And then you sell in those uh, thousands or tens of thousands of people. There may be some thousand people would buy it, or at least hundred people would buy it. You understand me? Go to where it's big market to begin with, so you feel, okay, successful, <laughs> first. And then you tackle the mountain later. You go back to your <laughs> terrible school or <laughs> wherever that was. Okay? You have to do something for success first, okay? Don't make it difficult for yourself first, okay? Yeah. Yo pensé que tal vez no estaba en nuestro destino hacer ese trabajo y por eso era tan difícil. She thought that perhaps it wasn't in their destiny to do that job. <laughs> Nobody has destiny to do anything. Thank you, Master. You do what you want, yeah? You do what you want, what you think is good for others, yeah? For yourself. But you have to plan a strategy, okay? If you want to go into market, you also have to know the market, you see? Yeah. Go into big, like, tens of thousands of people, there's somebody who would buy yours, yeah? At least 50 of them, 100 of them, then you feel success already. And then slowly, slowly they like it and they bring more people and then more and more. And then you feel more successful, okay? Don't aim into some small little school, <laughs> very little people, you know, and uh, maybe you don't have uh, affinity with that difficult school. They go somewhere else, yeah? Don't keep hitting the wall if the wall doesn't budge. <laughs> uh, if the, go the wall don't budge, then you budge, you know, you move, okay? I don't advise you to keep hitting that wall. If it's too hard, hit somewhere else, you know? <laughs> okay, what else? We have a sister in our center who is now getting uh, quite old and uh, weak. She's been in and out of hospital a bit. Mm. And she stopped coming to the center. Yeah. And I asked her, and she still, as I can s tell, it very sincere. Yes. But in her condition, she finds often she misses doing a full two and a half hours. Mm, okay. And she feels bad about that, and so she won't come. Oh, it's now, okay. Now, I want to... You know, oh, she's also a contact person and didn't come? No, she's not a contact Oh, person. she didn't come to the center? Correct. Oh, yes. tell her, don't worry, just come whenever come anyway. she can. Come anyway. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Master. Come anyway, because within the people, she will do more. Yeah. Okay? She okay. will be more encouraged. For sure. The more she left, the, the less, the weaker she become. Mm -hmm. And the less she will do it. Yeah? yeah? Okay? Okay, thank you, Master. Group meditation is you are in your element, you see? All the supportive people, and then you will be more strong. Yeah? Uh, she she needs to be more with a group, especially when she's weak like that. You see? And that's what you are there for. You come visit her, all of you or some of you, and then tell her, we welcome you back, don't worry, just a situation. Or maybe you're sick or something, just come back to us, and then you do better when you're stronger. Okay? Yeah. All right. 